Were you familiar with the Mad Max films? Before? Yeah, I'd watched both of the uh, the first two Mad Max movies uh, a while ago. Um, I'm an avid movie watcher. I love movies, and so I'd seen them and thought they were incredible. And and then I watched the third movie just before um, I went down to meet George Miller. So I was really um, aware of what this Mad Max world was, but Abby, I think, has a completely different experience with them. Yeah, I mean, for me, coming from Australia and having a true Aussie dad who is uh, a big supporter of Mad Max and, and, and always loved it, so for me, it was, it was something that I grew up on. You know, I'd seen them numerous times. Me and my brothers and sisters had seen them numerous times, so I had already, it was fully ingrained in my brain, all three of them, you know, <laughs> so it was, yeah. That's great. Now tell us a little bit about your character, so I'll start with you, Rosie. Uh, well, my character is called Splendid, and uh, she's pregnant. She's quite heavily pregnant with the Morton Joe's uh, first child, and, um, you know, these five women have been held captive their whole lives, almost in a bubble, basically, like wrapped in a bubble wrap, and they're very protected by him. They're his you know, most prized commodity and, um, and uh, you know, she's, she's pregnant, which is, was really interesting to play for me because it brought up a lot of different conflicts that she might have felt um, carrying this baby um, of a man that she has not much regard for and who has raped her and done, you know, unthinkable things to all of her sisters. And, um, and so that was interesting to play that, you know, does she have maternal instincts towards this child or is she kind of you know, d does she disregard it? And, you know, I think you see that in her kind of reckless behavior through the film. She's very conflicted and confused how she might feel. Great. And Abby? Um, the, I mean, the DAG is, the, the DAG is sort of, uh, I mean, the, the term the DAG is, is, an in, is an endearing word used for somebody who's a little bit left of center, a little bit awkward. Um, so that's what she is. And I think there's something really otherworldly about her. She has this incredible ability to, um, know what's coming. You know, she's a very observant creature, um, and she has that com comic relief um, that you'll notice watching the film. And that was something that I, I think that everybody re reacts to trauma differently. And some people use laughter as a way of of coping, and and she really does that. Uh, and at the same time, she's also in there to get her hands dirty. You know, she sometimes kind of just can't keep her mouth shut. You see her in the film a lot, just like blurting stuff out where everyone's a bit like, <laughs> you know, she's kind of, she's very instinctual. You know, she, she, she's neurotic and instinctual, I think. Now how, you, this was a long shoot. Mm -hmm. So how difficult, was it difficult on this shoot being in the desert for mm -hmm. so many months? Yeah. Well, we spent um, about six months in Namibia making this film, and it was um, grueling to say the least. You know, desert is a harsh environment. You know, you're battling the elements every day and the weather. Some days, you know, most days were actually freezing cold. Some days were boiling hot, dust storms, and you know, it's just it's draining to to do a simple you know task like getting to the bathroom took you know a lot of uh, mm. a lot of work and you know I was walking around with this big prosthetic belly on for six months, which was um, wildly uncomfortable and uh, <laughs> and definitely uh, weirdly bizarrely natural felt very natural, but. Um, you know, it was tough. We shot long hours, six-day weeks. Um, mm. Most of the cast had extensive prosthetic makeup, and so I think everybody Oops. went through through it. A little it. grueling. Mm. Now, Abby, I, I heard a story about your first impression when you saw Morton Joe's mm. character. Can you talk about that? Um, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't actually the first time, but there was um, a moment where uh, the the Morton had. It was the. It was the moment where the Morton had taken. Had take had captured one of the sisters, and there was a there was a scene where the cars were side by side, and he was sort of very threatening in in his um, in his appearance. And Hugh Key's burn is is quite method in his approach, and so even offset, he would he would address us as as you know he what did he call us? His littles or something no. gross? Uh, <laughs> something bizarre. It was always, yeah, it was interesting <clears throat> being around yeah. him because he still was in character. And yeah. so for us, you know, having limited acting experience too, we were sort it was of, a new it experience. was, it definitely kept us on our toes and was weird to navigate around him, you know, in the lunch line. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, there was there was a moment where I we we had some time before shooting, and we were sitting in the war rig, we were waiting to shoot, and and I and I was just staring at him, and he was staring back at me, and he and I just I lost my sense of self totally, and had a really bad panic attack, and couldn't I couldn't breathe, and my heart was panning out of my chest, and I had to stop the shoot, and I had to breathe into a bag, and. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was intense, and and it was it was the for me it was the first time that I'd ever had such a a bodily experience, uh, you know, a bodily reaction to to something like that before whilst filming. You know, it was it was it was an it, I liked the experience. I liked that I, I I realized that I can let myself go like that. You know. Oh wow. And how was it, can you talk a little bit about working with George, what kind of a director he is? Mm. Let's start with you. Uh, he's, I mean, he's a genius. I, I, I'm fascinated with the way his mind works. You just have to look at his films to know that he's um, a su supernatural being in the way that he, he is with his mind. And to, to be able to um, pick at that is, was really something that I took advantage of. And he's very... He's very nurturing and very calm. He's not aggressive or um, wild like his films are. He's very, he's very calm um, and supportive. So, I mean, I love him. <laughs> yeah, he's great. And he, maybe you can, Rosie, you can speak to his rehearsal process. Yeah, I mean, Abby put it so beautifully there. I mean, George was incredible force for us. You know, all of us. You know, five young girls that coming in. We you know with limited acting experience. I felt very um, protected and, and, and looked after by him and he was really there as our director to guide us through every single moment. You know, we, we were lucky enough to spend three weeks before um, filming, which is a real luxury because not everybody gets to do that. Three weeks working together as a group of young girls and um, workshopping. We had a movement specialist come in, you know, and help us to get loose and familiar with each other. Cause you have to remember these, these girls have known each other their whole lives. And so, you know, you thrust kind of five girls that don't really know each other that well. You have to get very intimate very quickly. Um, we also had a dialect coach and an acting coach working with us. Um, Eve Enzler, who wrote the Vagina Monologues, who was just such a, you know, incredible part of the process for us came in to help us strengthen our characters you know she's done extensive work in the congo with a lot of rape victims and so for for us to get to pick her brains and to hear her stories really gave us the backbone and an emotion for these for these women and you know it was a uh, very moving for all of us i think that's great well thank you